Hi, my name is Kapil Arora. I am a senior solution engineer at HachiCorp. And today I'm going to show you a demonstration using My a MySQL and Python web app. Uh, and in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can secure uh, this application and the database and the data in the database using HashiCorp Vault. Uh, we will showcase different features that are available in HashiCorp Vault, for example, dynamic secrets for the database, of course, and also the transit and transform in uh, secret engines, which are used for encryption as a service and also to do uh, format preserving encryption, uh, also data masking, for example. Right, so let's get right into it and I will show you how the demo setup looks like. So in this demo, I have a MySQL database which is running in a Docker container and a Python web application. In this state, the web application is not very secure and is saving data in a non-secure manner and it's saving sensitive information in clear text, for example. And then we are gonna change our setup and include HashiCorp Vault into the picture, which will also, in this case, in this demonstration, run in dev mode and as a Docker container. And then we are gonna use this Vault, uh, Vault instance to secure our application, to secure our data, to secure the credentials, and to also provide encryption and format preserving encryption for our application. All right, so, Let's now jump into the demonstration. And as I said before, I'm going to use uh, my MacBook and run all the application um, and database and vault uh, within Docker containers. So I have written down some scripts so that we can flow through it uh, pretty easily. So as a first step, I'm gonna start my MySQL database, uh, which is my script number one. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. I am saving the MySQL database under this local directory on my host, and I am providing it with a root username, password, um, uh, and also a database, right? Pretty straightforward, providing a port, and this will be available on my machine itself, right? And also MySQL version and which particular image I want to use for this demonstration. So MySQL is already running, and now we will do the configuration for our app before we start it. So I have already prepared the configuration and as part of the script, I'm gonna just copy it over and then I'm gonna show the script, uh, show the configuration to you. This is also pretty uh, straightforward. I'm just providing the database uh, address, uh, port, database name, uh, user and password. And you can see that root uh, password is provided in clear text which of course is not the best practice and it can also lead to security uh, problems and vulnerabilities and attacks. So we do not want that. And we also do not want developers to get clear text passwords of database credentials and then put it in their configuration, right? And we are gonna use Vault uh, later to solve that uh, using dynamic credentials. All right, so um, now that we have the application set up, as a next step, I'm going to uh, run this application using the third script. So you can see I'm building the image uh, for my application uh, using Docker build command. And I'm just running this application, uh, running this Docker container and exposing port 5000 where actually uh, the web application uh, will be uh, deployed. All right, so uh, let's run script number three and start the web application. All right, so the application has started. And now if we go to localhost, uh, you can see that the application is running. It's a pretty straightforward application, which has a bunch of uh, customer records. And you can see there is a lot of sensitive information here, like credit card number, social security number, salary information, date of birth information, so personally uh, PII information, and also information that should uh, not be leaked and is very important to protect this information, right? And uh, as part of this application, we have another view, which gives us the raw database results. So right now, the raw results are the same, so there's no data protection happening here, 
and we have a similar uh, output in both the cases. So we can actually test this application by adding a record. So I can add a record for Peter uh, and his date of birth could be anything. credit card number and some, some place Let's see salary by some random salary all right so you can see the record was added successfully but everything is in clear text and also in the database so now we have to fix this application and provide better data protection, at least on the database side where we are actually storing the information, right? We do not want to store uh, all the sensitive information in clear text and want to use some kind of encryption, some kind of uh, uh, masking for credit card numbers, for example. All right, so now that we have seen the application, let's go back to our demonstration here. And I'm going to, as a next step, I'm going to stop the server application so that we can start making the changes that we want to do. It will take a couple of seconds to stop the application. And once the application stops, we are going to proceed and do the next steps. You can see the containers are stopped and removed. And now the next part, uh, which is the important part, uh, we are going to start Vault as another container in our network. And Vault will serve at port 8200. And I'm using Vault Enterprise in this case because uh, we are using enterprise features like the Transform Secret Engine. And also you can see I'm starting um, Vault in a dev mode. All right, so let's start Vault, which is very straightforward, like starting MySQL or Python web application so all right so you can see that vault has started and the next step i'm going to perform is to apply a license because this is an enterprise version uh, my license uh, is only if i don't provide a license this applic this vault server will only run for a few minutes so i'm going to apply the license so that I can run this demo successfully. And at the end, you can see I'm running Vault status and Vault is initialized. And it's the 1.4.0 enterprise version. And we have it working. All right, so Vault is running. Now we should configure um, different plugins, different secret engines in Vault so that we can integrate that into our application. All right. So as a next step, I'm going to set up the database uh, database plugin or the database secret engine to secure my MySQL database or the connection to my MySQL database. So you saw that we had um, clear text password in the configuration and we do not want to do that. So we're gonna change that using the database plugin of, um, of Vault. So you can see I am using Vault and I'm creating or enabling a secret um, called database. So I'm enabling secrets, uh, database secret engine, and then I'm configuring it with MySQL connection information, uh, what kind of roles are allowed, and username password. We will see which roles, uh, these roles will be defined later, and I will show you, and you can see I'm using the root username and password. But the good thing is, as soon as we configure this, we are rotating the root password, which means the password will be changed. And this new, new password has never been seen by any human before. So it is completely protected and inside uh, the encrypted environment that Vault provides. All right, so we do not have the root password as root anymore as soon as we run this command. And then we are gonna define different roles to access or to get uh, username passwords for this particular database. So as you can see, I'm creating this role um, which grants all rights to my app database, which we created earlier. So not all database, but just the my app database. 
and the default time to live is only one hour. So these credentials are only valid for one hour and we can increase the validity of these credentials to maximum 24 hours. But after that, these credentials will not be valid and they cannot be used again. We have another shorter time to live, which is only three minutes. So the application can only ask for credentials and use them. And then after three minutes, as soon as the application has done its job, the credentials are gone, which is also very, very cool and uh, protects your connection to the database a lot because there are no credentials floating around in the environment and you can easily protect them by having no credentials at all when you do not need the application to talk to the database right so this is how dynamic credentials can be can be configured in vault for this particular database and at the end i am also creating a credentials to do a small test as to see if the uh, configuration that we did worked all right so let's run this script and see if everything successfully runs so you can see there are no errors and at the end i'm getting uh, new credentials so you can see the password and username of my database and they are only valid for three minutes right so these credentials will be expired or not valid after three minutes so now i have a, a connection uh, from vault to my database and vault is able to create credentials for the database so now that the database credentials um, setup is complete, let's move on and uh, set up encryption for the application or set up encryption in Vault so that the application can encrypt the data. So you can see I'm enabling another secrets engine, uh, which is called Transit Secret Engine. And I am creating a new um, key. So this is the key which will be used to do the encryption and I'm calling it customer key. And I can create multiple such keys to do encryption. And at the end, I'm just doing a test by using the customer key and encrypting my secret data, and then encrypting it again with another key and see if it works. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we just generated a key and set up or enabled the transit secret engine. All right, so it's running script number eight. And you can see I have two keys now and I'm able to encrypt the data and I get something of a ciphertext like this. And you can see the ciphertext is different because I'm using different keys for both the encryptions. All right, so now we have the database credential set up, completed and also encryption. What more we want to do and what is the a uh, new cool feature from Vault is the Transform Secret Engine, which can enable us to do format preserved preserving encryption. With that, we can actually preserve the format of, say, social security number and still encode it into a different number so that um, we do not uh, uh, put the real uh, SSN numbers in the database, but a, uh, say, a fake value, which can be decoded into the real value. So if the database is stolen or the records from the database are stolen, these are not real, real values, but still look like the real values. All right, so let's see what we're gonna do. We are gonna again enable the secret engine called transform, right? And we are going to uh, create something called a transformation and create a role. Um, and in this transformation, you can see I'm providing the type as FPE, which is the format preserving encryption. And I'm using a template, which is built in social security number. And I'm putting again, the SSN role that we created here. So we are connecting these two together. And then I'm just doing some tests and seeing if uh, the kind of transformation was created successfully. And at the end, I'm actually doing a test to encode this social security number. All right, so let's run this. And you can see in the meantime, my database credentials have been expired. All right, so let's run the transform secret engine enablement and configuration for my social security number. And you can see here that I have received a new social security number encoded value, which is completely different from my real value. And of course it, it cannot be, it is using the format preserving encryption algorithms. And 
in this case I got a value so we can actually decode it as well so I'm going to um, quickly decode it by setting these environment variables as well so that I can run this command so let's decode it using the decode command and provide this this value and you can see I'm able to decode the value as well and get my original value so the transform secret engine is set up to encode and decode the social security numbers as well and last but not the least we are going to also set up data masking for the credit card number so you can see I'm enab enabling the secret engine transform again and in this case I am creating again a transformation called CCN where I'm using the type masking this time and I'm providing um, a character for masking and I'm also providing a template which I'm creating this time so last time I used a default uh, template but this time because I want to define my own way of masking I'm providing a, a template and creating it here so you can see I'm providing a pattern for the credit card and I'm only masking the first um, the first three sections of the credit card and not the last four digits for example all right and at the end I'm also checking everything worked fine and then we are going to mask this credit card value so let's run this script as well which is number 10 and you can see this credit card number has been masked and in this case of course we cannot decode this value this, this value stays um, encoded or masked, and this is only a one-way operation in this case. All right, moving on. Now everything is set up. Now the next thing we need to do is set up our uh, application and set the right configuration for our application. So I'm gonna run this script, um, which copies over the, the configuration, which I already have set up. So this is script number 11 and you can see the, the configuration has changed. In this case, I do not need to provide any credentials, right? Because the application will talk to Vault and get the credentials and I'm providing all, uh, I'm setting up dynamic credentials, I'm enabling Vault, I'm protecting the records, um, sorry, I'm protecting the data using transit engine, transformation, transform engine providing the SSN role and CNN role that I provided when I was creating or setting up these uh, these things so all the things that we set up we just pick up the values for example these paths are important to to encrypt the values and uh, for example for the database uh, this is where the credentials uh, are located in vault uh, which the application needs to use to read them and also of course the path path to vault and a token for vault all right uh, now let's run the application you can see the application ran successfully and if we look here carefully you can see that the username password for for the database have been retrieved so these are not the root username password these are some new username password that were generated and picked up from vault so that functions that is working and the application is running be only because uh, the MySQL connection was successful, right? Now let's have a look at the application again. So we can refresh this. And now here you can see the application. Of course, the old records are in looking the same, but now we add a new record and see um, how that works. So I'm going to this time provide, of course, a fake uh, date of birth I don't have a SSN and some credit card value Munich and some salary all right so this is the application view you can see I'm able to see um, all the things that I provided so this is my social security number that I provided and my salaries so all this information is available to the application right it is able to read that but when we look at the database you can see 
that we encrypted the date of birth. We have format preserved encryption or we encoded uh, this using FPE, format preserving encryption, and this is not the real value. We have masked the credit card value, which happens only once. And also my address and my salary has been encrypted when it is stored in the database. So that's uh, how we have secured our application. We are not saving clear text data anymore in the database and our application doesn't have any more the database credentials directly. And as a last step, because we are running everything here in, in MacBook, so we, I can easily also destroy everything. And because Vault can run as a binary, as a single application, as a small container, it is also easier for developers to test against it, to develop against it, and it makes their job easy as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you liked this video and you learned something about Vault. Uh, until next time, goodbye.